Hello, my name is John Malone. I'm the Academy Principal at St Simon's Stock Catholic School in Maidstone. It's one of the, um, twelve, uh, one of twelve schools that are um, participating in the trip to Chengdu, China, in October uh, 2020. Um, I'm recording this video primarily for parents who were not able to attend the presentation which I gave at St Simon's Stock um, uh, earlier this week. Um, however, it will be of value to parents from the other schools as well. Um, so uh, if there's any differences um, that uh, w will apply to the other schools, then I'll point those out as I go through the video. Um, the only slide there, you'll notice that there is a YouTube link uh, in the bottom right hand corner there. Um, so you can use that link. Uh, there's a useful four minute video that has been put forward, that has been put together by TEP, um, which uh, you, you may want to play about uh, the recent um, head teacher visit uh, to, to China to. Um, look at the uh, schools and the sites that uh, the students will be going to. This slideshow um, that I'm using in the video, you can, if you go to that address there, you can download the slideshow. Um, the advantage of the actual slideshow um, that sits beneath this video is there are um, links in it uh, with video clips. Uh, so you may want to actually download the, the, the actual slideshow. Okay, so um, there's a picture of me and uh, this, uh, the, the students from an art class uh, at the Yongjing Middle School, which is the school that is partnered with St. Simon's Stock. Uh, each of the 12 schools uh, is uh, partnered with a different school in China. Fundamentals then, um, just to be aware of. Uh, the first one, uh, the first point there is this is a KCSP visit. Um, uh, be mindful of that. It is not a, a, a visit of students just from St. Simon's Stock Catholic School. Um, there are in total 12 schools participating, five Kent Catholic school, uh, uh, secondary schools and seven um, Kent Catholic primary schools, all from the um, KCSP uh, group of schools. Um, so it is a KCSP visit. Um, KCSP have entered into an agreement with True Education Partnerships. They're a Liverpool-based organisation. They specialise in um, arranging partnerships between UK and China, Chinese schools. Much experience on that uh, and more on that in, in the next couple of slides. Uh, the next thing is it's uh, very much um, a long-term partnership. Uh, the intention is, is that uh, this partnership will be for at least three years. Um, so hopefully uh, we will be able to repeat the visit to China uh, in subsequent years. It won't just be in October 2020. Mm -hmm. uh, and the final point there is that, uh, it, that it is that it is not just about um, a visit to China for a, a group of students from the schools. It is much more than that. So, for example, um, the Chinese students will be visiting the Kent schools um, starting in July 2020. Um, and we're hoping that uh, it will provide all sorts of opportunities to strengthen um, our curriculum learning so that uh, all students across all 12 schools benefit uh, from the experience of the partnership. So, for example, opportunities for video conferencing um, between the 12 UK schools and the 12 um, schools in China um, and other online um, conversations. So it, it's uh, very easy, for example, to uh, film a short video message and to um, uh, WeChat it through to uh, the partner school. Um, certainly, since Simon Stock, I've, I've done that. Uh, or I've done that already. I've sent a staff greeting um, to all the staff at the Yongjin Middle School, um, and within literally within hours, that has been played on the other side of the world, which is great. Uh, a key one is um, opportunities to learn Mandarin. Uh, certainly one of the driving um, impulses uh, from the Trust point of view is to strengthen modern foreign languages across all the schools in the Trust. That's a, a, a priority across all the Trust schools. 
Um, so hopefully there will be opportunities um, that will appear um, through the curriculum uh, to learn Mandarin. Um, probably initially um, it'll be primarily uh, um, after school opportunities, but that, those are th th areas that we want to explore and to, and to develop. Uh, I myself am already teaching myself Mandarin. It's, uh, it's, it's motivated me uh, to learn a new language. Um, and uh, possible teacher exchanges opportunities. There, there's all sorts of opportunities there. So the, the partnership is not just about um, a, a school trip in October. It's much more than that. A little bit of information about um, true education partnerships. Um, so the, the, the actual visit, the details of the visits, um, is being arranged by a, a, a group um, that are experts in this, have got a great deal of experience. Okay, so you can read those points there on the slide. I'm not going to read you through, uh, read all of them. Just pause the video and read them yourself. But the key one I want to emphasise is uh, they have got much experience um, in setting up school-to-school -school partnerships, um, <coughs> uh, more than a hundred schools, so a great deal of experience. Is, uh, of experience, um, and th they uh, are working with the Chinese government as well. Um, so they work on a government level at both China and in the UK. So they've got the backing at that at that level. So uh, experience um, and uh, uh, with with their own contacts and support, which are important. Uh, so that's true part true education partnerships and as I say they they're, they're based in they're, they're based in Liverpool and they'll be working with us at all times they've actually got um, <coughs> offices in, in Shanghai and when we were out there uh, 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 the the owner of TEP um, actually joined us uh, in Chengdu um, to give all that support I think from the TEP point of view this is a, a big venture as well because it is actually a, a trust partnership rather than just a single school partnership uh, and likewise in October 2020 there will be TEP people on site um, at all times during the visit to um, make sure that, uh, that, that we have that support uh, throughout the visit. Principles of True um, trust, respect, understanding, equilibrium. Um, there's a slide that just gives you uh, some more information about the credentials and the uh, experience of TEP. Uh, as you can see, uh, glancing at that, uh, their, their experience is primarily in the north of England, which is not surprising seeing as they're a Liverpool-based company. But they have now entered into partnership with uh, Kent. Um, and uh, there are 12 schools in the Kent Catholic Schools Partnership. Uh, when we had an initial meeting, when um, Clive Webster, the CEO, um, sent an invite out to the, 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 20, to the 24 schools, um, it was very much for the schools to decide if they wanted to participate in this. And uh, as, as you can see, uh, 12 schools in, in total, uh, all five secondary schools and seven of the primary schools uh, made that decision. From the point of view of my school, St Simon Stock Catholic School, um, a prime motivator is the fact that we are an IB uh, world school. We achieved that status earlier this year. Uh, so it's very much in our improvement plan um, to develop um, a, a global awareness of more students. So uh, for, for me, uh, there was ne never really any hesitation. Uh, I wanted to make sure our school was involved in this particular partnership. I can't speak for the reasons that the other schools uh, were um, have, have joined. Um, they, they'll all have their own specific reasons. Uh, but, uh, but underneath all of that, as I say, the, 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 the connecting reason across the trust is, the, uh, is, is developing the, the languages element. As, as, as well as cultural and so on. Um, so there are many, many reasons uh, to visit China, so you can have a look at those uh, points yourself. Uh, clearly, uh, economical reasons, um, uh, that obviously links to employability, uh, as the uh, rapidly becoming the largest economy in the world, um, the huge population, uh, a fifth of the world's population um, and obviously the the cultural reasons uh, uh, are, are hugely important the, the sort of heritage uh, and from the student's own personal point of view being 
effectively an ambassador for the UK. Um, uh, great experience and opportunity. Uh, we were very, very aware of that, of how much attention we got when we were out there. Um, there were not many Westerners in Chengdu. <coughs> Chengdu is uh, a long, long way from the sort of main population centres of uh, Beijing and Shanghai. Uh, so Chinese people were looking at us. Um, they were uh, stopping us and asking to have their photograph taken with us. Uh, and that was interesting. So we, we were very much the sort of the focus of attention, which, which, which is wonderful, but it's also a responsibility because uh, our, the way we projected ourselves, we're, set, we're, we're presenting an image about the UK. Uh, and there, of course, is that key word, uh, um, which is on the next slide as well, immersive, very much of an immersive experience. Benefits to the pupils and students, there is... Thing. It's that immersion. Uh, this is not a superficial trip. It, you know, it, it is an amazing experience. We had a, a, a superb um, time when we went out to China, the, 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 the delegation from the school, uh, to find out, to try to find out what it would be like for the students. But the, the real thing that absolutely hit us is that you won't benefit from it unless you actually fully immerse yourself in the experience. It is a sensory overload everything you look at every moment in a sense is different very different from what we're used to um, that can be pretty exhausting um, but it is a very very enriching very very motivating um, and so the character building that will come out of that uh, for any children who participate will be enormous in terms of their personal awareness their confidence their understanding of diversity uh, their global awareness etc uh, etc et and, and hopefully they'll make contacts and uh, yeah, th through the school links and it'll provide opportunities to build lifelong friendships um, and those contacts again will increase employability in, in the future uh, so a whole range of reasons and, and uh, to participate and the benefits to pupils and students um, very much of an immersive experience um, and that's again emphasised there in terms of what to expect. Um, the insights into the customs and traditions, the opportunities to sample local cuisine. Um, on that, as I say, uh, if your motivation is just simply to go on the trip because you want to see the pandas, that really isn't what it's about. Uh, and I would urge you to think long and hard and twice about whether you want to participate, if that is the sort of key reason. Yes, the pandas are an absolutely wonderful moment in the trip. It's one um, morning of the six days that you will be out there. Um, but it, it is really about fully immersing yourself um, into the, the local life. Um, so think about that in terms of, for example, um, food. Um, you will be going to local restaurants. You will be eating the, the local food. Um, it's not a Western culture, so um, the opportunities, although there will be some opportunities to go to Western food outlets, they will be actually limited. Uh, so uh, you need to think through all of those sorts of issues um, when, um, w uh, w when you actually go out there. You're a long way from home. Um, uh, the, parents, uh, the parents will not have um, access uh, to speak to you um, while you're at, while you're actually away, um, the uh, teachers who are going on the trip effectively are assuming locus parentis parental responsibility, uh, and obviously if there's an urgent need to communicate with parents, then uh, it will be via um, the group leader um, and, and the teachers on the trip. But uh, no opportunities for student to parent contact. Uh, while you're away so it's very much of a growing up experience all of those sorts of things and and that's what will make it so enriching and it, it will turn it into a lifetime experience for you so okay that's the sort of background in terms of the reasons you know hopefully um, the reason you t the, the fact that you were at the presentation um, on monday or the fact that you're playing this video now um, you you already understand those reasons and have internalized them so the part you're waiting for who will you be going with? Where will you be going? What can you expect to see and do? Um, those are the secondary schools taking part. So I've, I've highlighted um, my own school. As I said, there are five secondary schools and seven primary schools taking part. And you can see the names of the schools uh, that we are partnered with. So it is very much of a sort of collective trip. Um, so um, 
from the St Simon Stock point of view, um, you are a secondary school student. Yes, there will be primary school students on the trip. Uh, and that's important because y your behaviour, you will be a role model for younger children for at primary school age who will be on the trip. Um, we have no idea as, at this particular moment as to how many students from each school. We won't actually know that until the date of the deposit, um, the 29th of November, has passed. Um, so the size of the of the visit, how many will be going, and the age range of the visit, um, it, it's not really possible to say, other than the fact it will be drawn from uh, 12 schools, secondary and primary. So, um, as I said, um, in uh, the middle of October, uh, the 17th of October to the 23rd of October, um, TEP arranged for a leadership delegation from those 12 schools to go over to China uh, for a fact-finding mission, basically. Um, it was a very, very intensive visit. Um, we were actually only out there for four, just over four days. Um, it was a six-day visit, including the travelling days at each end, so we only had four days there. Uh, two days were visiting the local sites, or some of the local sites that the children will see, and then two days were visiting our schools. Uh, so there's a few photographs there for you to look at. Um, <coughs> where did we go? Um, well, we went to the Sichuan province. So you'll notice uh, straight away that uh, uh, it's a long way from the sort of traditional population centres of uh, Beijing and Shanghai and, and, and Hong Kong. Uh, that it is much more central. Um, it is the region that borders uh, Tibet. Um, so, uh, and as, as I said earlier, um, it was very noticeable to us how few Westerners there were. I've not been to any, this is my own first visit to China, so I can't actually speak for Beijing and Shanghai, but certainly that was my impression. So Chengdu, a central region of China, um, the cap uh, so Chengdu is the capital city of the Sichuan province, which is the, the central region of China. So that slide shows you a, a few of the uh, sites in Chengdu. We'll develop those in the next few slides. Um, it's a big city. Um, I mean, it, it, it says the population there is nine million. Uh, that's nearly the size of London. Um, if you go to different sources, I, I, I googled and went to Wikipedia and it actually said the population is, is approaching 16 million. Um, one thing we do know is that it is a rapidly expanding city, so it, effectively it did feel, it, it did feel huge, um, a big, big city, um, uh, and rapidly expanding, big high-rise apartments, um, very busy traffic, um, uh, so to get Took a bit of time to get to uh, places, uh, but that was all part of the enriching experience. Everything you looked out out of the bus window um, was absolutely fascinating. And as I say, rapidly expanding. Um, the you can see the 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 old original city there, um, but to the south of it is the Tianfu New Area, and there's an artist makeup there. Um, and a little more detailed map of that. As you can see, it's a, develop a development area sort of built around a, a technology corridor, so to speak. Um, it's a massive Chinese project. Uh, everybody was talking about it when we were over there, when we went to the schools, it, because um, uh, many of the schools, including some of the schools, were linked with not the St. Simon Stock one, which is still in the, the more in the older part of the, uh, of the region, but uh, are moving into this new development area, which when it's finished, and it started about eight years ago, uh, will be an additional more than two million people. Um, uh, so uh, certainly the, the, the presentations from government officials made it, uh, it, it, it very eco-friendly, uh, a designed area. Uh, and as I say, um, most of the schools will be moving into this area. Uh, so the Yongjing Middle School that St Simon Stock is linked with, uh, they, they said in about two years they will be moving to a new school uh, in this new development area. Now, the outline, as I say, uh, when we went, the, 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 the leadership delegation, uh, it was a six-day itinerary, including two days of travel. So we only actually had four days, um, four full days there. Uh, the experience for the students will be um, much longer than that, 
um, it will be an eight day experience um, and that's a, a uh, it, it is a sample itinerary note it, it is not a finalized it may change but it's giving you a pretty reasonable idea of the type of uh, experience so as you can see um, the the first day and the <coughs> and the last day are traveling um, you've got morning lunch and afternoon and it's a pretty intensive day uh, most of the days um, in terms of the program so doing things in the morning lunch either at local restaurants or at the sister school um, more sightseeing in the afternoon then to dinner then back to the accommodation and the accommodation will be a, a hotel uh, in Chengdu um, and the actual sites um, uh, so you got there the, the visit uh, sites within Chengdu itself um, the Panda research base um, uh, we went to we didn't go to the Yellow Dragon River um, uh, so I can't speak about that uh, we did go to the uh, the walking alleys as they called it uh, in the, the historic areas of Chengdu um, we did go to the National People's Park um, and we did go to Jinli Town also called Old Chengdu um, the, the, uh, I don't I think we went past the Chengdu city plant uh, park and botanical garden um, but I don't think we actually went to that um, and we drove past the uh, global center um, but we didn't actually go in that and we didn't go to the Wenshu monastery so um, we saw um, some but not all of the sites that, you, that, that uh, your uh, son or daughter will, will see if you go on this particular trip um, but as you can see a key part of it is actually the visit to the sister school which will be on uh, the intention is on three days um, up to and including lunch at the school um, so a morning visit including lunch at the end um, now what will the, the, the uh, what will your child do in the sister school that will be very much up to the school um, to decide uh, how to arrange that um, it'll be I would imagine visiting classes a tour of the school uh, one thing that I'm very clear is that you'll be incredibly welcome um, we visited a total of six schools when we were out there, uh, including the school that St Simon Stock is, is linked with, the Yongjing Middle School. And at all six, um, the welcome was absolutely phenomenal. Um, so um, it was a big deal for uh, the the, the, uh, the partner schools in China. Um, likewise, when their students come over to us in the summer to all 12 schools, um, certainly one thing I learned from this is how important it is to work ever so hard at all times to make them feel welcome. The Chinese people are very, very formal people um, with a strong sense of you know, respect and custom and tradition. Uh, and the, the formality of the welcome was really, really important in terms of good manners. That's just something to be aware of. Okay, so... Um, a few of the a few of the sites, as I say, uh, um, we saw the uh, Kwanzai Alley and we saw Jinli Town, and we saw the pandas, and we saw the People's Park. Um, we didn't see the the, the other sites there. Um, so, a little bit more about the sites that we visited. I won't spend too long. You can pause the video and look at the pictures yourself. Um, I'll just at this point um, mention that if you download the actual original slides that show the link was at the beginning of the video, um, uh, that the, some of the photographs are hype, uh, are basically video links. So that's an advantage of playing the original um, uh, the original slideshow, and you, you can just hover your mouse or, or tap on the pictures, and those that are videos will turn into videos for you, which uh, brings it alive a little bit more. Okay, so uh, on the first morning we went to what was the, um, our guide called Old Chengdu, um, also called Jinli Town, which is a very, very um, traditional, authentic Chinese town experience. Um, lots of food markets. Um, that's an example there, that particular one there. He's, he's uh, making noodles um, on the slideshow. That is actually a video. Um, uh, all built on a, on a, a, a hill uh, with uh, uh, a stream running through it. So it was a lovely introduction to China and, and very much the sort of authentic Chinese experience with lots, lots of uh, food markets and souvenir places, um, but in a very, very tasteful way. Few more pictures again. This guy here is making dumplings, and again, that is a video. Um, 
uh, and you can sort of see the, the, the street decorations and so on, which was really lovely. Um, back in Chengdu, in the city, uh, that there were, um, I say, a big, big city, very modern, very bustling, but like any city, the the it had uh, very beautiful parts of the city, um, and we visited this area um, on a couple of occasions. Uh, pedestrian um, shopping area, but very traditional um, in its design, and as you can see, very, very crowded. Um, Chinese people go there. Okay, so it, 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 as I say, there, there were relatively few Western people in Chengdu, uh, but uh, people from the Sichuan province will travel to Chengdu and to experience the culture of this old city as well. Um, uh, the the p picture on the right there, something that, that um, struck me, um, was uh, in many, many places, uh, just on the sides of the roads, etc., um, uh, Chinese people have their ears cleaned. Um, so I was more than once, I never actually said yes, but more than once I was approached to ask if I wanted to have my ears cleaned. Uh, that's something you will see um, when you're out there. Um, more pictures from Chengdu. Uh, again, this picture here of a traditional making of tea. So they're serving tea. Again, that's a video. Uh, really fascinating to watch the uh, traditional way in which they make the tea. Um, <coughs> Again, all pictures. The, the the guy there was our local guide, uh, the TEP employed, a, a great guy called Bruce, um, who was with us um, during the day each day on, on the coach, um, uh, telling everything, telling us all the information about the sites. Um, so again, you, there will be that support when we're when you're actually out in China. There'll be a local person who will be with us during the day to give the information. And then the second day uh, uh, that we were out there, um, it was a real highlight, yes, the, the panda research base. Sichuan is the home of the giant panda. That's what it's famous for. As you probably know, that pandas do not travel very well around the world. Uh, so this is probably the best place in the world to see giant pandas. It was a big park. It was a, effectively a, a, a forest, bamboo forest, with lots of panda sanctuaries. Um, uh, that the, the the gentleman on the right there eating the bamboo it was one of the first ones we saw literally it, yeah if I filmed that myself you, if you go to the video um, it is a, if you go to the slideshow it is actually a, vid, a short video clip of the panda eating the the bamboo um, and the next enclosure little baby pandas um, we spent a whole morning there. It was absolutely lovely. It was a real, a real, real highlight. And it is a breeding um, centre. So we went into a, the, the scientific um, buildings um, and we saw a newly born panda uh, you know, without any fur um, in an enclosed, um, secure sort of uh, um, behind glass. Uh, but again, what, what a wonderful experience to, 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 to be able to see that. Uh, Panda souvenirs everywhere, by the way, as you, as you would expect, because Chengdu is known as being the home of the panda. So uh, uh, expect um, your son or daughter to come back with uh, bags full of little panda souvenirs. Uh, in Chengdu, there was, uh, as with all cities around the world, there were um, um, big parks. Um, this was the sort of central centerpiece, the National People's Park. Uh, uh, lots of street artists, lots of uh, tea being served uh, in traditional tea houses. Um, the uh, gentleman there is a soldier, a singing soldier. Um, lots of little surprises there uh, in, in the National People's Park, things you wouldn't expect to see. Again, it was uh, all part of that experience. Um, uh, this year is the 70th anniversary of the uh, the revolution which in which China became a republic in 1949. So the, uh, we visited just after the, all the celebrations. And I think those celebrations happen every year. They are annual. So there was a strong sense of, um, of, of that occasion still there. Lots of the flags and banners were, were, were out and about um, as we went around. Next few slides then are, are about the school that um, Sir Simon Stock is partnered with. Okay, so of relevance to the parents and carers from my own school as, as the academy principal. Um, so I, I can't speak for the other 12 schools. Um, uh, again, hopefully you'll have been to your own presentations and you've been given input about the uh, sister schools 
so if, if you're a parent or carer from one of the other schools, uh, you have to go to the slideshows uh, for your own schools. Um, but uh, certainly uh, this is ours, the Yongzhen Middle School. This information is taken directly. It was actually sent to me by the head teacher. Um, we linked up via, we have linked up via WeChat, which is the Chinese version of WhatsApp. And they sent me this information about the school, um, which I feel very comfortable with. And in terms of the values, you can see the values are, are, are written there. Um, relatively a small school, 600 students, <coughs> 54 staff. Um, s similar age to St. Simon's Stock Catholic School, actually. Um, it was um, uh, founded in the late 1960s. St. Simon's Stock was founded in 1967. Uh, it is a middle school, okay? So as far as I can tell, um, and I only spent an hour and a half at the school, and most of that was very formal, being moved around with press, etc., taking photographs. Not really that many opportunities to speak, and the head teacher couldn't speak English. Um, so it was via tra a translator. Um, I think, um, but as far as I know, middle schools in China, the age range is 12 to 15. Um, so uh, in terms of its location, quite a rural, in, in, as rural as you can get for Chengdu. Um, we did actually see small agricultural holdings on the way. And then you can see that in the character of the school. Um, the, the, the central... Um, was uh, uh, that they took me to was built around ceramics art and that that was obviously a, a big part of their curriculum which was uh, interesting and, and absolutely fascinating um, their motto uh, is there um, never give up no matter what difficulty you face always challenge yourself to a further aim which uh, again sits very comfortably with um, the uh, ethos and values of uh, my own school a few photographs of the campus uh, and as I say, um, and a few photographs fr from the from their history. So the, the, what you've seen so far are all pictures that were sent to me by the uh, head teacher of the school, uh, Principal Lau. Uh, and then these are pictures that I took during a, a very brief visit. So there's the front gate, uh, banner uh, welcoming um, welcoming the trust, welcoming the uh, leaders. Uh, uh, there I am in the uh, on the picture on the left uh, with Principal Lau, uh, and the lady to my right, uh, uh, Vic. Uh, she actually was from TEP. She'd flown over from Shanghai, uh, and she would she, she was there to be the official interpreter. You can see the pictures of children welcoming us. As I mentioned earlier, the the welcome was was really really impressive. Um, so as we arrived, you, you have the welcome. Um, and we weren't there long, um, but uh, the the area we went to that took us straight to was the uh, the centre of the school. They had um, uh, built a sort of art department area around a, a traditional um, Chinese street, um, and they took to a class uh, where uh, the students were doing ceramics, um, pottery. And uh, uh, that particular photo there, if you go to the original slideshow, is a, is a short video clip of them being very welcoming and standing up and bowing to me as I went in. Uh, and then they sat me down and uh, had a go at the potter's wheel. Um, wasn't particularly good at it, and, uh, but uh, uh, I gave it my best shot. Uh, and then this, this, this sort of formality, as I mentioned, they are very, very formal people. And it was lovely. I sat down with a head teacher and uh, I was served Chinese tea, original Chinese tea uh, from a teapot and using teacups that were made by the students in the school. And the gift, which is in front of me there, uh, from the school to my school, uh, was uh, the uh, teapot and the, and the cups, which is lovely. And, and that's on display in reception. Uh, if you visit our school and then the formalities um, there was a formal um, presentation I was taken into a room and there were 50 people there a selection of teachers parents and students the head teacher principal Lau gave a speech uh, and then I gave my speech and a, a slideshow so you can see me there on the right and you can see the images from my own presentation of uh, students in uh, our own school uh, and then the formal um, signing of the agreement of partnership um, and the exchanging of presents and then 
outside and um, they took all the students from the art class uh, that I've been visiting. Uh, that's why they're all wearing aprons. It's not part of their uniform. It is the art students, and uh, you can see children are children, it's a, and, and teachers are teachers. Same as any country in the world. Um, a very happy, nice moment. The the photograph that was taken um, afterwards. Okay, so the details. Um, now they are in the trip letter um, for St Simon Stock. Catholic school parents, um, which you can download from the link at the beginning. Uh, if you were not at the presentation, that's where you can get the letter from. Um, again, just a, a reminder, if there are other parents from other schools who have been referred to watch this video, um, this, this is the particular section where some of the details may be slightly different. I'll point those out as you go through, particularly the dates of payments, although most of the details um, will apply um, for you as well. Okay, so um, the um, cost, okay, so just running through these points. Uh, the proposed date of the trip, um, 18th of October to the 25th of October 2020, so it's an eight-day trip. Um, that um, is the last full week of Term 1. So um, uh, returning Sunday the 25th of October will be the Sunday in, of the first weekend of the half-term holiday. Uh, so you will miss a, a week of school, obviously, um, uh, speaking to St Simon Stock Catholic School students, but I'm, I'm sure it'll be exactly the same with the other schools. Uh, that that you need to think through about the fact you'll have missed work and there'll be the catch-up in the holidays, etc. Uh, you can't access, I probably don't think you'd really want to, to be honest, but uh, you, the, the, there's no um, internet connection uh, with the West when you're in China. Uh, so you can't, you know, um, our school VLE frog um, is not accessible while you're out there. Um, not that you'd really be wanting to do your homework while you're on this visit. Um, so um, the number of students and staff, the TEP, we we, we have to work. I mean, they, they, they have to work to a budget. Um, uh, so uh, the, their, um, their policy is uh, that for every 10 students, there will be one place provided for a teacher. So obviously to ensure that there is uh, effective supervision there. Um, we have no idea of, of how many students across the 12 schools um, will be part of it. We won't until the end of November. Uh, so we can't say how many teachers will be there, but it will be on that ratio at least of one for every 10, um, possibly more. Um, but that's a decision that will have to be made. Uh, what, what there is a commitment to is that there will be at least one teacher or support staff, somebody known for each school. Um, so um, there will be a delegated teacher from each of the 12 schools um, so that there is a known face. Um, but whether there are more teachers than that kind of depends on the number of students in the collective group which we don't actually know. Okay, so uh, because this is St Simon's Stock, the sister school for that part of the itinerary will be the Yongzheng Middle School. It will obviously be different for the other schools. Uh, the price, notice subject to change, um, but the price uh, is um, if, if, it, if the total number of students is between um, 10 and 19, the price is 1516. So that's the the official price at the moment. Notice that the price will fall as the total number of students increases. Um, so if we get between 20 and 29, uh, the price will drop uh, by 26 pounds and so on. Okay, um, dropping to no lower than 1467 if the total number of students is above 30, um, including 30. Um, and for every 10 students, one free teacher place is provided. Um, so, working on the basis of 1516, <coughs> um, uh, the payment instalments are as follows. Now, the um, deposit is £250 that um, has, has to be paid to the school, to St Simon Stock Catholic School, by the 29th of November 2019 to secure a place. And then the balance will be paid in three instalments um, <coughs> of £422 each. And the first instalment is the 10th of January, 
the second is the date is the second of March, and the third is the fifth of June. Um, now, a couple of um, provisos here, um, just to emphasise: these are the dates that we have set for Saint Simon's stock parents and carers. If you are a parent or carer from one of the other schools, the dates may be slightly different. There, um, uh, the with all twelve schools are bound by the deadline when TEP have got to receive the money from the school. Okay, so. Um, we have therefore set our dates for parents in advance of the dates that TEP have given us. Um, and uh, So, for example, the first instalment, TEP have got to receive the money by the 20th of January, so we have set a payment date for the parents, for our parents, of the 10th of January. Uh, so, so um, if you're a parent from another school, check with your own school as to what those instalment dates are. These are the instalment dates for St Simon's Stock. Um, and the reason that they are in advance of the date that we've got to get the money to TEP uh, is simply because of our own financial procedures and we have a finance office and they have ch uh, dates when they issue check runs and they've got to allow time for money to be cleared, etc, etc, uh, which is why we've set dates in advance of the date that TEP have set. Um, the important thing is, is on those dates in January, March and June, TEP have got to receive the money from us, okay? Uh, so um, it, it is essential that you meet those three dates with the with the balance. For St Simon's Stock, and I can't speak for other schools uh, in the partnership, but for St Simon's Stock parents, um, our finance procedures will allow you, because it's online, if you wish to spread the payments um, um, in advance of those three dates. So you can you could um, pay a hundred pounds. Um, a hundred pounds uh, yeah, you could make a monthly payment for example as long as by the 10th of January you have paid 422 pounds okay so you can spread it as you wish and I appreciate that some parents may um, find that a better way of managing it is but you you must have put it into the account um, the amounts listed there by those three dates that's the important thing okay um, what is included? Uh, so, uh, all accommodation is included. Um, accommodation is a hotel. Um, TEP have clearly not decided which hotel yet. They can't until they know the size of the trip, how many students will be going. But to give you an idea, um, it will be a three-star hotel. Um, that's a typical three-star hotel, give you an idea. Each room will be shared by two to three students. But to be clear, um, the decision as to which hotel has not been decided yet. Um, it will include the uh, flight, major airline. We flew China Southern on the way out there and we came back uh, KLM. Um, it, uh, it's a long flight, be, be mindful of that. Um, it, uh, uh, about 10 or 11 hours. Um, uh, slightly longer because we changed each way. Um, on the way there, we changed <coughs> in a a Chinese city, Guangzhou, Guangxi, um, I can't remember how you pronounce it, and on the way back we actually flew Chengdu to Amsterdam, changed to Amsterdam, and then on to Heathrow. Uh, so it is, it is a long flight, and there, there is a, a seven-hour time difference, there's seven hours ahead. So again, be mindful of that, it, it is a timing journey, and there is jet lag in the time that you're out there, obviously. Um, but it's so exciting that you sort of ride over that one. It will include local transportation in China, including airport transfers, um, uh, both um, outward um, and there in uh, in China. Um, so uh, uh, and local transportation in the UK, as I say, between uh, from pickup to the airport, whichever airport we flew, we fly from and to. Um, we actually, we flew from Heathrow, and that, so I would imagine it's likely to be Heathrow, but TEP will work that out. Um, all, mile, all meals in China. Um, there may be limited opportunities for students to uh, visit well-known Western food outlets, but as I said earlier, it is an immersive experience. You must expect um, to sample the Chinese uh, cuisine. Uh, one of the points that I really emphasised in the, in the evening um, is that it is it is absolutely an inclusive trip. Um, uh, if you have um, allergies to food, um, then uh, be aware of the fact 
that uh, you're eating in local restaurants. Certainly when we were out there, there was a, um, it felt to us that a lot of nut oil was being used. This is not to say that uh, you can't go on the trip, um, but we do need to know so we can pass that information on to TEP in advance so they can do the necessary research and pass the information on because they've got to work out which restaurants to go to and to work out. And when, when um, we, we go to the restaurants, there will be an interpreter to speak to the restaurant. Um, but it is really, really important that if there are any form of food allergies for your student, for, for your son or daughter, um, that we know that um, um, in advance before you pay your deposit. So contact your local school, contact the school, um, and, and make sure we know that so we can um, pass that information on. Um, <clears throat> one local TEP staff member interpreter, I've mentioned that. Um, the uh, visa application um, process um, is included, uh, and obviously all the sightseeing activities. So uh, that's what's included. Key questions um, that we, we answered on the evening may not cover all the questions. Is it safe? Um, uh, TEP carry out a thorough risk assessment. They're very experienced. They've been running the trip for years and they are working with the local government. Um, and for an added layer of security, the Chinese Ministry of Education are also overseeing the trips. Um, uh, in the time we were there, we had no trouble at all. We felt completely safe. Um, I know there have been news items in about problems in Hong Kong. That was a long way away. That was a two-hour flight, uh, more than two hours. Um, certainly, we, we felt uh, very, very safe. And as I say, um, the Chinese government are involved. So from their point of view, um, they would, uh, they've would they got their own motivation to make sure that the trip is very, very safe. So uh, TEP, who have got all the experience, uh, um, will obviously do a, a thorough risk assessment. Um, so the message is, is that the trip is safe. What about the visa process? Um, they say you do need a visa for China. It's included in the cost of the trip. TEP will manage it. Hopefully they'll manage it as a group visa, which means that um, just using the information from the passport, they will be able to process the application without having to do a trip to the embassy in London. Um, but there's no guarantee of that. If there, is, if there is a need to do an individual application, then there will be a trip to London and uh, to, to, to do that. We, we as the uh, leaders had to go to London. We actually went out the week before and it was a very, very smooth, easy process getting the visa um, for the trip. But uh, TEP will manage that and that's in included in the cost. How much spending money should my child take? TEP are recommending approximately £40. It's obviously up to you. Um, the money is pretty much for souvenirs and for gifts. Uh, so it depends, I suppose, on how generous your, your, your son or daughter wants to be. Um, but it'll depend on the individual child. Uh, so um, uh, we found when we were out there, it was very, very cheap. Um, it really was. Um, the the uh, souvenirs, I bought lots of little souvenirs and typical souvenirs were two or three pounds each. Uh, it obviously depends on what you wanted to buy, but... Uh, um, I can see where they've come, where they come from when they say forty pounds will be uh, absolutely sufficient, uh, but that of course is for you to decide. Um, what vaccinations will be will my child uh, require and who will pay? That's not covered in the trip cost, um, and you should ask your GP. Um, that really is the the advice we have to give there. Uh, because the vaccinations will be personal to your child and your child's medical history and what they've already had. Um, uh, what I do advise, I, mean, I, I, I went to my GP and um, I, I left it a little bit too late, to be quite honest, and I, I wish I'd done it a bit earlier. So the advice is uh, at least eight to ten weeks in advance of the trip, um, uh, in part to make sure that the vaccinations have got time to take effect, um, but again, when I when I visited the GP and I, I set them an appointment and then the, the nurse was sick on the day of my appointment and so, suddenly um, there was another delay, those sorts of things can happen. So just there on the side of caution there. Um, but uh, yeah, the number of vaccinations you required and, and what for, um, I needed um, three different jabs, all on the same, all at the same time. That was absolutely fine. 
um, but it will depend on your particular child. Uh, what if my child needs medical attention? Um, any medical eventualities is covered by the travel insurance for the group, uh, which is covered in the trip cost. Um, it is really, really important though that you provide all the details on the registration form for the trip, um, whatever, whatever the, um, since Simon Stock, we, we've, uh, that's on the actual letter. Um, if you're a parent from another school, obviously you'll have to check um, the paperwork for your own school on that, but it's really important you give all of the um, relevant information. If in doubt, put it down, basically, um, so that TEP have got everything that they need to know. Um, and we've been told that uh, should uh, your child be poorly on the trip, that they use international hospitals, which are, which are for the tourists. And I say the cost is fully covered by the uh, group medic by the group insurance. So what you need to take part, um, it, absolutely essential, you must have um, a valid um, passport. Um, uh, check that uh, it has at least six months left following the date of travel. So if uh, uh, basically if you add six months on to, from October 2020, that means it's got to be up to the end of April 2021. And you'll also need the passport for the visa application in September. Um, if you hold a passport uh, for another nationality, again, you, you just need to um, fill the details on the form. TEP will do all the checking. I can't imagine there'll be any problem with um, if you have a passport for another country. Um, I know at least two members of our delegation that went out in October um, are not UK nationals. They had absolutely no problem at all. Um, unless you unless you uh, you've got a passport for a country that China is at war with or something like that, uh, which I don't think will apply, you should be absolutely um, fine. But as I say, the important thing is just let TEP know, and, and that's part of the initial paperwork for St Simon's Stock. It's one of the key questions. I'm sure it will be for the other schools uh, to put down your passport information. Uh, visa, as I say, that has been covered. So next steps. Uh, return the reply slip for St Simon's stock parents that the reply slip is at the end of the letter that you were given on the evening and you can download the St Simon's stock letter from the link that was at the beginning of this video um, and the non-refundable deposit uh, is uh, uh, the, the deadline is say 29th of November um, notice that it is non-refundable more on that in a second um, we will communicate by email throughout the year. Again, I can't speak for other schools, but for St. Simon's Stock parents, um, you, you, you're all linked to the school via um, email. And so just check your emails for that. Um, and uh, we will be holding a parents and students information evening, um, probably in term six. It may be term one of uh, the next academic year and that's where we go through the, the real details including the code of conduct the rules of the trip etc etc um, to make sure everything is absolutely uh, clear um, and sort of fi final consent forms etc etc in terms of cancellation and refunds i've just simply reproduced here the information that we were given um, <coughs> from ta from tep uh, so you can read that yourself in terms of cancellations. Okay, so it tells you <coughs> um, that uh, the instalments um, uh, are refundable, but up to a particular portion, dep de depending on how far in advance of the departure trip should you um, pull out. Um, and obviously, the closer you get the, uh, to the actual date of the trip, the, uh, the, the less you get back. Um, and all deposits are non-returnable and non-refundable unless um, uh, um, if cancellation occurs within 30 days of payment of the deposit. So deposit payment is due on the 29th of November. So that would effectively, I think, would take you to the 28th of December. Within that time period, the deposit actually could be refunded, but only if the school finds an alternative traveller to take your place. Okay, so just be aware of that. Any questions? So for St. Simon Stock, parents and carers, um, any questions, any queries, please contact our Educational Visits Coordinator, Miss Warren, 
her email address is there. That's obviously only for St. Simon's Stock Parents and Carers. If you're watching this and you're from one of the other schools, uh, you will need to contact your own school um, for uh, for questions. Um, and, and they will, I know, have already um, been in touch with the, the means of communication for that. Um, final couple of slides um, about TEP, uh, including links. Um, lots of information on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, etc. So please you know, do subscribe to them because they will put, post regular updates about other partnerships that they've got, as I say, there are over 100 schools. So it gives you a definite flavour and feel of, of who they are and what they're doing. So please follow those through. And KCSP, because this is a KCSP project and a KCSP trip, um, so you can follow KCSP using the uh, website there and uh, also on Twitter. Uh, so that's it. Um, that's the presentation. I hope that <coughs> I hope that was useful to you. Um, I say all the contact details, um, all the links, etc., are on the video. Um, so I would finish just by saying it, it is an absolutely wonderful experience. It is a truly immersive experience. Think long and hard. Don't. Um, don't make a, an impulsive decision for your child to go on the trip. Um, you, you've got to basically be absolutely certain you're going there. You, you're taking part for the right reasons, and uh, and that, that uh, you you want your child, and your child is prepared and ready to fully immerse themselves in the experience, uh, which which will be a life changing uh, visit. Thank you very much. I am signing off now.